Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. It's Friday again, so it's time for another episode in building a switching layout. Today I want to go over how you can uh, install um, alignment pins or dowels in order to be able to guarantee that your layout modules will always uh, be perfectly aligned uh, once you put them together. Okay, so uh, also though, I, I, I want to start by addressing some of the questions and comments that came up after the last video on building the baseboard. So let's go ahead and get started. Now YouTube tells me that if you're watching this video, there's a greater than 60% chance that you haven't subscribed to the DCC Guy channel. So take a few seconds, click on the subscribe button, and then click on this bell right next to it. When that comes up, select all, and then you'll receive a notification every time that I upload a new video to YouTube. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so what I want to do first is talk about the uh, the comments that came in after the last video on building a baseboard. And they basically were, you know, three general topics. One dealt with using plywood versus using dimensional lumber. Another dealt with screws versus glue. And finally, one on using uh, uh, foam alone instead of using foam plus plywood. So let's let's take those in order then. Um, so let's first talk about the plywood versus dimensional lumber. Now, in designing this uh, module, I wanted something that everybody could build, you know, that you weren't limited in what you could do simply because you didn't have uh, a large wood shop and the like to be able to cut up strip sections of plywood out of a four by eight foot sheet. And so, you know, most people don't have that, uh, those tools. They might have a jigsaw, they might have a circular saw, and, and some of the things like that. But, you know, they probably don't have a big table saw that they can lay out a four by eight foot sheet of plywood to rip down into uh, the type of dimensions that we need. Also, um, it is difficult with those kind of hand tools to be able to cut pieces of uh, plywood to the same uh, uh, dimensions that you get when you buy pre-cut lumber. Okay, and you know, you can go into a, 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 a hardware store over here at any rate, and you can get stuff cut uh, for you. Uh, they might balk at trying to cut out a whole bunch of pieces of plywood. So that's probably not an option for a lot of people. So for the, for the greatest majority of people who potentially might take on a project like this, I feel that dimensional lumber is best. Um, there's also the question of uh, structural strength and rigidity. I personally believe that dimensional lumber is going to give you greater strength. And the reason behind that, uh, that, that I feel that's so important is um, with a home belt layout that is what I call stick belt, and that's using L girders and that kind of thing, um, it's made to just stay in one place for its entire life and then be broken up at some point uh, when the owner no longer needs it anymore, uh, or moves. Whereas with modules, uh, they're going to be moved around a lot potentially because you might move from one apartment to the next or house to the next, and you can just pick up the modules and move them. And then you're up and running as soon as you get there. You don't have to build another layout. Um, and, and I think that structurally, the uh, dimensional lumber approach is just better than the plywood approach. Uh, another thing is a lot of people are into uh, modular railroading and they belong to modular clubs and they go around to various uh, events where they put their modules together and they have to haul them around. Also, in England, one thing that is very big, uh, almost every weekend, you know, pre-COVID times, uh, you know, they were having shows all over the country where people could go take their modules, set them up, and, and show them off. And it's a, you know, a very popular thing. So you need something that is structurally sound to be able to take all of the jostling uh, that is required when you're moving these modules around. So that's something I, I, I feel, you know, truly that um, dimensional lumber approach is going to be stronger than plywood. Now, the second question, screwing versus gluing. Um, I'm a fisherman. I do fly fishing for trout. And, you know, I used to build bamboo fly rods. 
And bamboo fly rods are made by cutting strips of bamboo into three-sided pieces and putting them together and gluing them together into the final six-sided uh, uh, structure that they are, or four-sided in some cases. But at any rate, we had a lot of discussions on internet forums about what is the best glue to use. Uh, a lot of people, you know, experimented a lot with the various tight bond uh, PVA wood glues. And unfortunately, they do something that's called creep. And over time, those joints will slide. They are not permanent, so they, it will creep on you. And with bamboo rods, that's important because if you get a rod that is, you know, set at an angle some, somewhat, and it stays like that any amount of time, the joints will creep and it will take on a set in a curved or whatever uh, shape that it's left in. So you have to be very careful with those. There's ways of straightening it and you can heat it and straighten it back out because the glue will loosen when it's heated. So that's one of the reasons that I don't like PVA type wood glues. Now a lot of people um, 10, 15 years ago, uh, well 10 years ago anyway, were experimenting with Gorilla Glue and some people liked it, some people don't. It can be very messy, it expands a lot and, and um, as a result of that expansion, it can separate glue lines, and um, you have to be careful using it. And, you know, it, it's just something that I never got into, and I don't fully trust it yet. I think the jury's still out on the long-term uh, stability of the product. Um, it, might, it might hold for a century. I don't know. It might start to fall apart after 10 years. Um, I think Borden's or Elmer's one made a similar uh, type of glue that did not... Uh, tend to foam and expand as much as Gorilla Glue does. But at any rate, so that is one option if you're really into gluing, you can try it. And, you know, layouts that are built with glue, they can hold together, you know, if they're not moved around a lot. But it's this moving around and jostling and, and, and you know, putting the, the various components under tension and torsion and, and that kind of thing, that I just do not trust glue in the long run. So that's my answer on glue. Uh, screws, on the other hand, they provide you with a very strong mechanical uh, uh, connection and they're not going to move unless you break the screw itself. So I just feel that screws in the long run are going to be better for you. Uh, another thing is if you ever need to take a part out to make an adjustment, you can do that if you've got them screwed in. You can't do it if you've got it glued in. Okay, let's talk then about foam. Now, on a previous layout that I built, uh, I did use some foam slabs for the second level, upper level uh, layout, portion of the layout. And in that case, I used two inch thick foam insulation slabs, and uh, they were just sitting there on uh, metal shelf brackets up on the second level. And they seemed to be fairly rigid and, and did not seem to sag in the two years that I had that upper section uh, available before I moved down to North Carolina. Uh, I just wonder in the long term how much stability there's going to be in, in that, though, and whether or not they will sag over time. Um, as far as uh, home layouts, it's probably okay with something that you're going to be moving around and taking to shows and that kind of thing. I just th don't believe that foam alone is going to give you that structural rigidity that you get from a sheet of plywood placed on the top of your baseboard. So that's my reasoning there. It, it always comes. Also, there's a durability issue. Uh, plywood is not going to get beat up, uh, whereas the foam, uh, big slabs of foam, can't. So I just think it's a durability issue uh, in that respect as well. Okay, that's my answer to those uh, three topics. Let's go ahead and move on and begin the dowel installation process. Okay, so let's go ahead and I want to show you the uh, alignment dowel system in a uh, sample here before we actually get started on the uh, installation process. What I have here is just two uh, cutoffs, two pieces of lumber left over from making the uh, baseboard. And what I've done is I went ahead and installed one set of the dowels in here. And you can see that right here on the end, these are perfectly aligned right one up against each other. And here are the dowels. So you can see we have a male, it's flush installed into the surface, and then we have the female here. You can see there's a slight indentation here in this one and a little dimple or pimple or whatever you want to call it here sticking up projection on this one. So all you have to do is put these together 
and every time they're going to come into perfect alignment, you know, and if you have a pair of these, you guarantee that you're going to be perfectly aligned every time. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you do this. Okay, these are from DCC Concepts. They sent me these to be used in this video. And uh, what we have are two different sets. The first one here is a, an installation set or kit, and it contains a uh, 13 and a 19 millimeter wood bit for drilling the holes, the recesses, and everything for installing these, and then a smaller drill bit uh, to uh, create the pilot hole. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. It also comes with a, a pair of dowel sets. So you can uh, create your first connection between two modules using just this set here. Now, if you already have a 13 and a 19 millimeter wood bit and a, a drill bit for, you know, doing the pilot hole, then you can just buy sets of the dowels separately. Okay, so they, you get four pairs of dowels in this set. So you can check these out on the DCC Concepts website. Okay, let's go ahead. I want to get the module set up and then we'll go ahead and take a look at how you go about putting these together. Okay, as you can see here, I've got both modules up on the uh, tabletop that I used in the last video. I put a piece of plywood underneath of them to get a perfectly flat uh, surface uh, to work with because the tabletop had a slight lip around the edge and you know that uh, can affect whether or not it's sitting perfectly flush. So I want to make sure that the top of the, uh, of the bench work is perfectly flush with the table and with each other. You also want to make sure you know that they are flush with each other on their sideboards. Like so. And you want primarily to make sure that the front of the layout is going to be perfectly aligned. Okay? It doesn't so matter so much if the back is because you're going to have a back scene on here, uh, a backboard and scenery that's going to hide any small imperfections on the back side. But the front, you want it to be perfectly flush in that case. And then of course you want the two top pieces here to be perfectly aligned as well. So let me go ahead and I'll pull the camera in and we'll get a close shot shot of how you go about installing these dowels. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is square this up and then clamp it together so it's uh, permanently, so it's affixed in the position that we want it to be in once we put in the dowels. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's got that side done. Let's get the other side done. Okay, so that's got them perfectly aligned. Now, the next thing you want to do is take your drill bit. Okay, and so what I have here in this uh, drill is a 1 8 inch bit. So the idea is to go ahead and mark two positions here on the board, the end boards, and I'm going to drill a hole right through board to board. So we'll have one pilot hole, an eighth of an inch in diameter that goes all the way through on both sides. And then we'll be able to drill the mating holes, or the holes for mounting the uh, dowels, uh, using those pilot holes so that they'll be perfectly aligned after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those holes right now. Okay, so that's all there is to that part. Now I'm going to pull these apart and we'll go ahead and start drilling out the holes for mounting the dowels.
Next, I'm going to take the 19 millimeter bit and I'm going to drill the hole in the face of each one of these two modules uh, for mounting the, or for flush mounting the dowels themselves. And you know, it's got a nice long pointed uh, bit here on the end that will fit right into the hole that we drilled to act as the pilot hole. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm going to stop and check the depth. So I'm just going to take one of the females and put it in and see. That's not deep enough. So you can see that's going to fit flush now. Let's do it on the other side. And we'll test that one. And there we have another flush fit. Okay. Now the next step is with the 13 millimeter. And in this case, we're going to drill from the back side here and create a 13 millimeter hole that goes all the way through and comes out the face. Clean out that hole a little bit and we'll see how it fits. Looks like I'm going to need to come back and clean that out with the bigger bit in a minute. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, you can see we've got a good flush fit on that side. Okay. So let's clean this one out. And there, we have another clean flush fit. Now, what uh, DCC Concepts suggest is to apply some PVA wood glue to the flutes here and then install the dowels themselves. So, let me get my wood glue and we'll do that. Okay, I, so I keep my, uh, my wood glue in an old French's mustard dispenser, so that makes it easier to work with, I think. So let's go ahead and install this dowel. And we'll go with the second. Now, if you find that you need to tap these in because you've got a very tight fit, use a wood block like so, so that you do not damage the uh, aluminum dowels here. Okay, so we've got those two done. Let's go ahead, I'm going to get the other module out and do the same thing and install the females, and then I'll come back and we'll give it a test. Okay, so I finished drilling it out, 
and I've tested them, and they do fit nice and flush. So let's go and install the females. Okay, so we've got both females on here now. What I'm going to do is push the camera back and I'm going to go ahead and put both modules up here and we'll see if they do, do mate up. So here we have them. I've got one module already laid out on the table. You can see the female dowel sides here. So I'm going to tip the other one up and pull them back. And I don't know how well you can see it, but I'm going to go ahead and bring them into contact and let the dowels pull things together. Okay? And clamp together that side. And clamp it together there. And we now have a perfect alignment and put a center mark right here and it's perfectly aligned and you know they just came together the way we want. So let me come back around and we'll wrap this up. What I'm going to be doing in the next video is we're going to go ahead and install the actual legs. You know I put these temporary corner blocks in here to keep it strong and rigid while we were doing this part of it. I wasn't really planning on doing the uh, legs yet mainly because we have not been able to previously get 2x2s in this area. All of the 2x2s uh, that were being uh, uh, produced previously came from Canada and due to the COVID and various other issues, um, they hadn't been able to get 2x2s down in this area in North Carolina. And I had to search and search and search the last time I needed some. So I felt I wouldn't be able to get them. But I was up at Lowe's the other day and while I was there I checked and they had about a dozen two by twos in stock. So I grabbed uh, those that I would need to do the legs. So in the next episode, we'll go ahead, we'll install the legs. I'll show you how I put those in, level them out, and the kind of levelers that I actually install in them so that you'll be able to adjust them for differences in floor uh, deviations from level. So that's next time. For now, that's it. So, as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process to install these uh, alignment dowels from DCC Concepts. They fit together great, and they're going to guarantee that your modules are always going to be perfectly aligned when you uh, connect them up. So, take a look at those on the DCC Concepts website, and there might be other sources uh, for similar uh, types of dowels, but to be honest with you, I haven't found them. So, until next time, have a great weekend. And uh, be safe out there, wear your mask, and uh, stay away from that nasty virus. Bye now.